I saw a picture of Christ on the wall, and I said, uh, hey, Mommy, uh, is that Santa Claus? You know, tell me why this is true, not what you think is true. Tell me why this is true. I was in the 11th grade before they discovered that I couldn't read. And God reached down and said, all I need is some raw material, and I was good raw material. I had to learn to read and learn to read the Bible. Faith that saves us is not an unreasonable faith. A drunk staggered by. He said, you're not supposed to be doing this. She reached down and he said, if you say anything about Christ in this house again, I'll beat you to death with this poker. I'm either going to have to get answers or stop witnessing. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Bottom line is Jesus is the Son of God and the Bible is the Word of God. Most people state the Bible is true and 95% of Christians all over the world and many pastors can't defend it. You can't deny truth. You can't deny what truth is. His legacy is to show that to be saved does not mean to lose the mind. We cannot know ourselves truly unless we know our God truly. People would say, I've never seen anybody do something like this before. It opened doors. It was way ahead of his time. History has changed. Walked out of that classroom and I looked up and I said this prayer. God, I've always believed you were there. Now I know. All things are possible with God. The fact he was practically illiterate and he had to learn all these things in college and then get a master's and a PhD. And then uh, he's right there with some of the top Christian leaders at the ICBI conference. R.C. Sproul, J.I. Packer, Roger Nicole, Norman Geisler, and a whole host of other evangelicals met in Chicago in order to respond to the battle for the Bible that was taking place within evangelicals. Barely could read the norm, you know, at the center of what's going on with evangelical Christianity and battling for the Bible and building that stronger foundation through the ICBI statement. Such a contrast. It's like I forgot just where he, he came from and how high he got in, in terms of uh, uh, the impact he had and so many of these top Christian leaders. There was actually an earlier statement that was put out by Ligonier, and it was called the Ligonier Statement on Biblical Inerrancy. And it wasn't a fully developed statement, and the person who was supposed to draft them didn't quite get it done. Uh -huh. And by quite get it done i mean they weren't done at all so they actually all sat there and they had to draft them together and what they wanted was a unique statement because they didn't only just want to say this is what we believe they wanted to be very clear and say this is what we don't believe and here's the interesting thing when you look at all of the major affirmations that come from the chicago statement that are tried to be put out by evangelicals what model did they follow? The model of the Chicago statement of a series of affirmations and denial. What we needed at that time was a philosopher. We had theologians, but we needed somebody who had something else that they could do. We needed somebody who had, you know, this Thomistic background where, you know, he's used to reading Thomas Aquinas, objection, objection, I answer that, and then all the replies. <laughs> and so he's thinking you have to affirm and then you have to deny, you have to negate and say, this is not what we're saying. This is what we're saying. You have to explain it. And I remember in the, in the video, somebody was saying that there's uh, the importance of, of defending. He said he went into philosophy because he knew that's where the questions were. I'm either going to have to get answers or stop witnessing. He showed how philosophy was the missing part. That was the discipline that had been thrown out, had been neglected, and he 
explained how philosophy undergirds all of the other disciplines and it makes you better thinker in every single one of them. He could tell if we followed this idea to right. a logical conclusion, the end result is going to be this. Right. And I think he was always ahead of his time and saying, here's where we're going to be going. And it sounded like, oh, come on, we're not really going to go that route. That's exactly where we're going. He realized if you let inerrancy slip, then you've let every single doctrine in the scriptures slip intellectually. You know, one of the things that your dad said was, if you can't trust the Bible in trivial matters, ah. then you can't trust the Bible on essential matters either. And I think that really sums it up so well, you know, uh, because today we, we have a supermarket mentality. We're going to shop for what we right. like. Uh, and you get into dangerous, dangerous ground when you begin to minimize what, you know, uh, what the Word of God has to say. And my mom even told uh, me that uh, during the ICBI conference, Bill, you probably know this, that they asked him to put a statement together that everyone could kind of look at and then begin to discuss. And what he, in addition, brought to the table on that is he said, we don't only need affirmations and denials. We need corresponding commentaries to go along with it so that we can explain in further detail what we mean by this. Right. Because now right. we live in a generation where the framers are gone. They can't clarify what they meant by it, but we have their clarifying statements on it, which is very valuable. Hi, I'm David Geisler, and I'd like to invite you to check out our upcoming movie at normgeislerthemovie.com where you will learn how God can work through you to change history, even if you feel not qualified.